Okay. So my name is uh, William Ruiz. I'm a professional percussionist and drummer. My ancestors are from the island of Puerto Rico. I was born and raised here in the United States. Um, so my, my background is on uh, Taino, Indian, Spanish, and Portuguese mix. Uh, so the instrument that I'm, I'm holding right now, it's called the Mayawakan. This is uh, what is called a petroglyph. And in the, uh, the ritual worship aspects of Taino life, they would have, you know, idols, if you will, and statues uh, of uh, different uh, icons of uh, Taino culture. This is uh, Ata Bay and, and uh, there were others. Um, so the, uh, the uh, Maya Wakan is made from hollowed out tree log uh, from the uh, na native woods of Puerto Rico. Uh, if you look at the instrument again, you can see how it's carved. There's like a slit here, a slit here, and a slit here, like an H. So there's two tongues. That's one tongue there, that's one tongue here, and then the rest of it's the regular lock. So you can see the side, you can see inside, I can get closer, you can see how the tongues are carved by hand. Now the difference between an African log drum and a, a indigenous Caribbean log drum is that the, the African log drums are carved from the, the top. So the, bon the, the bottom is solid. And uh, it's not like an H, it's more like an open space, which I have one I can show you later an example of uh, like African slit drum or the the krill, which is uh, another type of uh, log drum. All right, so uh, I'll give you a little background about Taino culture. So the uh, the Tainos are a subgroup of the Arawak tribe. Uh, modern Tainos live throughout the Caribbean from the greater Antilles, Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, into the Caribbean Sea. Uh, on November 19th, 1493, Christopher Columbus thought he had discovered India, but he actually discovered the island of Puerto Rico uh, during his second voyage to the New World. The language Arawak is, is commonly used actually in both English and Spanish. A couple words, for example, uh, the word hammock in English is derived from the word hamaca in the Arawak language, as well as the word hurricane comes from the word huracan. So that's an example of some basic, uh, you know, Taino words that have e evolved into English and Spanish languages. Uh, the physical appearance of the Taino were like me, medium height, uh, black hair, bronze skin tone. And um, the men and the women, generally speaking, as a majority didn't wear any clothing. Although married, Taino women wore what is called the Nagua. And uh, a Nagua is a short apron type of skirt, if you're not familiar. Nagua is the Arawak word. The, the Tainos also painted their bodies. They wore earrings, they wore nose rings, they wore necklaces, sometimes made of gold. Uh, Taino rituals occurred in what is called the Bate. The Bate was an area set up like in a triangle like a petroglyph uh, or a or an idol and uh, around the the settlement where they live they would have like a rito they'd have you know which is a ritual ceremony um, so they did what during the aritos what they did were sacred dances uh, along with music games trading and storytelling in the area of the bate which was in the Bahio, and the Bahio is like the village. The Bate was like the, the settlement within each community. Um, they played this game with a ball made of tree gum, leaves and roots. The game had two teams with up to 30 players, including men and women. To play, they had to keep the ball in the air with their shoulders, elbows, hips, and other parts of their body, except for their hands. Couldn't use their hands. Uh, Tainos are very religious people and believe in many deities, the semi-spiritual object housing a spirit and it, its fundamental symbol in the Taino religion. It is a stone with three cardinal uh, points, so basically like a triangle. The shape of it. I don't actually have one on hand, but if you look in Google for um, petroglyphs, you'll see the various 
images of the different uh, petroglyphs and cave drawings of the Taino. All right, so let me demonstrate some basic Taino rhythms. Uh, the Taino's rhythms were very basic. It, it was not like today in music that you hear drumming and percussion. It's more like ritual based rhythm. So it's basic like quarter notes or eighth notes. So for example, this is a typical Taino rhythm. And this would be another one. So if everybody, I don't know if everybody has a drum or they can use their hands on the table and we can try and practice a basic Taino rhythm. So we'll start with the first one, okay? So right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And that rhythm, while they were chanting and dancing, we'd be playing all over again and sound like this. And then the other rhythm, which is, so it's, Pretty basic in some of the rhythms, like I said, they would chant and they would do dancing and they do prayer ceremony uh, in the community with that kind of rhythm. So moving on, I brought some other instruments with me today that I'd like to teach you some rhythms on. And does anybody have any questions in reference to Taino culture, Taino rituals, Taino uh, ceremonies? Any questions? Can you guys hear me? I don't hear anybody. Yes. Hey, we can hear you, William. Oh, okay, okay. Anybody have any questions? No questions, right? Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next instrument. So we were talking about indigenous Caribbean um, Taino culture, and everybody knows about slavery and uh, about you know colonialism and stuff like that, and not focusing on the negative aspects that are in, in any way, just focusing on how different instruments and different cultures came together during these times, during these tough times for indigenous uh, people um, throughout the world. Uh, so in the Caribbean, so you had like you know Caribbean drum style, which is that like quarter note, eighth note thing, and then you the African influence, which this is a djembe from the Ivory Coast, African drum. In Africa, actually, it was used for war, but uh, now it's used for ceremony and uh, ritual practices and presentation of cultural tradition. So, so the difference, like, so the uh, Taino rhythm I was playing is African rhythms are different. They're more like, like right, left, right, left, right, left. So. lot more busy, a lot more percussive and syncopated were these rhythms. So I'll teach you a couple of rhythms on the djembe. Also today I'm wearing my Gungru Indian bells, which I laced into my sneakers. And these are cacho seeds from South America. And you can't eat cacho seeds. You can use them to make music, but if you eat them, they're poisonous. So not a good idea to eat. Don't recommend it. And then also I have another shoe. So, and I use this for counter rhythm. So if I'm playing my drum and then I add the bell. You can see how it adds uh, sound to it. So, um, so even on an African drum, you can mix cultures. You can play Taino rhythms. Or you can play rhythms from actually India where Columbus never made it there, uh, but the, like, for example, Takadimi, that's an Indian rhythm. So if I add my bell, right, right, left, left. Also, that rhythm in Western uh, drum practices is called the double stroke roll. 
So it's right, right, left, left, or left, left, right, right. So if you're practicing along with me, slowly we'll go right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. And then when you practice it, you bring up the tempo. So that's one rhythm. Uh, another rhythm is the single stroke wall, which is right, left, right, left. And when you speed it up after practicing it for a while, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. eventually it becomes a roll. And same thing with the other stroke roll. Or the Indian rhythm, takademi, 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 takademi. Eventually becomes a roll. And then here's an African rhythm, which is right, right, left. So if you want to practice along with me, it's right, right, left. And if you're left handed, you can go left, left, right. And just giving you a little technique information in reference to the djembe as opposed to the Maya Wakan. You saw that I was playing the Maya Wakan with sticks. And uh, if I can figure out where I do it, I'm, yeah. Here they are. I was playing the Maya Wakan with sticks, but the technique for the djembe is with the hands. And the way you get the sound out of a djembe, there's three sounds, technically speaking, according to African tradition. There's the bass, which with the palm of my hand, you can see my fingers are up. That's one technique. When you practice, you hit the center. Or another technique, conga drum, is like this. The other sounds that you have are the accent, which is right on the rim of the drum here. You see the rim? So you get that down. And then you got the slap, which is tone, slap, bass. So when you're practicing on a djembe or a hand drum in general, you could be aware of that. Usually the Africans stay within this diamond. And so they'll play here and they'll play here, but they don't play the whole drum. Me as an improviser, I play a whole drum because I'm gonna extract different sounds. From the whole instrument. All right, so let me let me teach you a few more African rhythms. So we got triplets, right, left, right, left, right, left. So that a lot of Africans use or Afro-Caribbean people. Uh, as a group, they'll end like that. It sounds kind of nice. So now I'll move on to another instrument, which is actually made in Switzerland. It's called the hand pan. The hand pan uh, is similar to what is known as the steel pan. The steel pan is actually much more complicated in terms of pitch, meaning like the, 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 the tone. So this one, this is a hand pan. It looks like a flying saucer. Let me take it out of here for you can see the bottom. So it has two notes here, which are bass notes. I can, like, I can play this, if I put it in my lap, hold on one second, let me, if I put it in my lap, I can play this side of it, see?
It's made of metal and um, it's a pretty cool instrument. Uh, most drummers don't play pitch instruments, but there are a few percussion instruments, including this one, that are pitch instruments and really beautiful when you can play rhythmically in, in, in a pitch, particular pitch. Okay, so, um, all right, so key of C. So that's the octave right there. You see that note? That's a D, that's a D. This whole area here, this circling area, that's D, the note D, right? So D, E, F. So one, three, five. In a scale, you got seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, three, five, seven. So I'll play with these notes. So let's say I want to pretend uh, that I'm doing a Taino groove. So we'll, we'll refresh with the rhythms I played on the Mayawakan, the rhythm I played on the djembe. You see that all rhythms can be played on any instrument, but the pitch, the tonality, the technique, how you bring sound out of an instrument is what makes the difference as well as you know some musicians are academically very good but they don't have a lot of feeling and so you can tell the difference between artists if you listen to music whose heart is more in what they're doing who's more practiced who's more cerebral okay all right so taino rhythm is like So that's that, that that's that Taino rhythm that I was playing before. Same rhythm. See how different it sounds if I play it on the djembe. I play it on the handpan. Hello? Okay. So mm -hmm. Okay, so the next uh, rhythm I can play is another uh, Taino rhythm, which is. So that was one of the two Taino rhythms. Now I can play you uh, the, the African rhythm, which was right, right, left. It's amazing what you can do with pitch as opposed to drumming because like And then I'm doing a similar thing here. So it's right, right, left, or if you're left-handed, left, left, right. So you would practice. And then over time, obviously, every day you do a little bit more, it gets faster over time. So it starts off sounding like, and then as you build it up, So, and that was our single stroke roll there. I ended with right, left is how you make a nice ending. Or double stroke roll, which is like I said, Takadumi, the Indian rhythm.
So different, different um, dynamics, different tempos rhythmically. If you play more atmospheric. Even on a djembe. You see the difference in pitch and tonality of the atmosphere that you can create. So obviously hand drums are, are more practical for really high tempo, faster grooving kind of music where a hand pan can be faster, but it's more about the atmosphere. It's more about the, the feeling. And when you go back to the, to the Maya Khan, I mean, you don't get any more organic than tree log. You know, it's, it puts you in a more spiritual, a more uh, natural feeling in terms of the sound. You know, this has more of a new age, metallic, organic sound where this has, you know, this is mother nature. You get all that natural sound and you know obviously when they're chanting i mean they're you know it's very heartfelt so if you ever get a chance to like search out and seek out uh you know like uh teresa's cuevas she does these presentations for the tiny little dance and stuff you get a feeling of the whole group you know with the with the percussion and the, the log drum and the you know shakers and rattles that they used and uh sometimes flutes uh, different flutes and stuff like that. So, uh, anybody have any questions about any of the instruments? Questions? Okay. Um, Which is your favorite you want... to play? Uh, it's really tough uh, to say because I'm just a drum drum addict. You know, drum addict. <laughs> so I love to drum. So I'm like hooked on drumming. So, but I like this. I like the I like that melodic feeling, right? But I. But I also like the combined instrument. So I think, uh, I mean, if I had to do it all over again, I'd be a bass player because <laughs> less things to carry and it's fun. But uh, but being a percussionist, it's like, like I, I'll show you guys since uh, if I'm on, let me take a walk with me here. I'll show you. I have a lot of different percussion instruments that I can I can turn you on to here that you see that it's hard to say, oh, which is the one because like here, these are frame drums, you know? This is a great instrument. It's a frame drum, right? It has all this rattles and stuff in the back. So, you know, they make all different kinds of sound. This is like a, a rain wheel. You know, it makes the sound of like rain. This is a sabar drum from, from Senegal. You know, I have wood blocks here. That make all kinds of sounds. These these are Balinese drums from Indonesia. You know, um, over here I got like endless supply of conga drums, which obviously everybody knows for Latin music and dance music. These are kendang from Indonesia. This is a octopad. It's an electronic uh, drum thing. This is a huge thirty-inch chow gong. Got a bag of percussion, all kinds of cymbals and maracas. You know. So I, I love to Okay, so let me go back here. Let me flip this around. So is there a particular instrument that every anybody would like to hear me play for them? Oh I forgot to guys show you guys the tongue. What's that? Say that again. That one, it's, a, it's it's froze. That one is from Peru. Okay. Yes. All right, hold on a second. I need to put this back in the thing. You want to see the shoes? No, that one. I can't, I can't make out what you're saying exactly. That phone is like a mouth, an instrument, it's an Afro-Peruvian people. OK. 
Okay, let's see. Wait, I need to. I need to. Yeah. She's talking about the Afro-Peruvian people. Are there any drums from the uh, Afro-Peruvian? Afro yeah, do you have any? I don't have Afro-Peruvian drums, but you know, all drums are similar. Their drum is similar to a djembe. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, you know, it's all animal skin. So like this can be used in Afro-Peruvian drumming, but their drum doesn't look exactly like this. It's it actually exactly like got a wider bottom. And then, you know, congas are also used in Afro-Peruvian music. You know, it just depends on, you know, if you're going back to really traditional, authentic instruments, you know, every culture has their own specific one. You know, I have uh, Asian drums, African drums, Caribbean drums. Um, I don't have a lot of South American drums, um, but, uh, you can do pretty much the same thing with any of the drums, you know, it just, it's the appearance is more, uh, in terms of appearance, it's like, you look at a, a South American drum, it looks like their tradition. If you look at an African drum, they kind of looks more like, so you can tell the difference, but sound wise, they're pretty close. They're both using cowhide and uh, goat hide. The horn is made out of, of wood. It's like a Yeah, out of wood. And this, like for example, this one, you see? It's like tree log, hollowed out, one piece. So that's how the Peruvian, Afro-Peruvian drums are like that too. They got cool stuff. You ever hear of like, well, like, you you know, Peruvian stuff or even Colombia has the cumbia, cumbia music, similar. Uh-oh. What happened to my power? Not working. Hello? Hey, can you do me a favor? Give me another wire. Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Me. Okay. We yeah, can hear you phone. and see you. Okay, cool. I'm just trying to change the uh, power supply here because. All right. Okay, now we're good. I didn't want to lose you guys. Okay, so uh, is, uh, is there any. You, you guys, any other instruments you would like to hear? I mean, I have all kinds of stuff. I got tablas from India, you know? This is a very cool instrument from India. The tabla. That's the uh, the high-pitched one. Then they have, like, Brazilian kashishi. This is from Brazil. You'll hear this in South American music sometimes. I have a couple sets of those for like shaker kind of sound. These are cool. So can be. more sound gives you more of that background and this is uh this one's cool because you know, like i said it has this behind it so you know I can play Taino rhythm here. And then you got or even African rhythm. And uh, all the rhythms that are playing, they're all the same rhythms that we, we, were, we were learning. Single stroke row, double stroke row, 
the, the African rhythm, which was right, right, left. And then we have the African rhythm triplets. And then, uh, uh, oh yeah, the Indian rhythm. Taka Demi or double stroke roll. Right, right, left, left. Oh, it's cool. And, yeah. And if you want, I can play uh, more hand pan for you, or I can play um, the djembe, or we can uh, teach you. Oh, actually, there's one rhythm I haven't t taught you yet, which is a good one, calypso. I'm going to teach it to you on the, uh, on the djembe. Calypso is a cool rhythm. It's pretty easy for people to learn. So if you guys are... Uh, ready to uh to practice you got your uh, your your pots and pans or your uh or your table in front of you or your drum you got a drum so let me turn this down a bit so you can see the drum better okay all right here we go move this over a little bit all right here we go so so calypso is so Right, so it's slap, bass, tone, bass. So that's one, two, three, four. That's the first one. The second one is, the third one is a variation, so it's five beats. The first two are four beats. So the first two beats are four. The third beat of that phrase is five beats. And then it goes back to the beginning, the fourth beat, which is four beats. And then you start over again. All right. So I'm going to play it for you in regular tempo so you can hear how it's supposed to sound. So, I'm going to do a review of all the rhythms that we've gotten so far. We've got the Taino rhythm. And the second Taino rhythm. And then we got the uh, single stroke roll. Stroke roll or the Indian rhythm called Takademi. Right, right, left, left, or left, left, right, right. And then we got the triplets, which is right, left, right, left, right, left. the uh, other African rhythm, which is either left, left, right, or right, right, left. And you can also do left, right, right. So depending 
on the tempo and the way you uh, emphasize the way you're playing it. So when you start off slow, actually, it's like, or, but as you play over time, it evolves and it takes on different sounds depending on the, the dynamics, the volume that you use, or the accents that you put in, or the tempo. So if I start off slow, as I pick up pace, you see how it transforms. Actually, one that I didn't teach you, uh, two basic versions of clave, which is very important in Latin music. You know, coming from the indigenous, from the Taino, the Caribbean Indians, mixed with the Africans, mixed with uh, the Europeans, uh, a lot of different new music was created. And, uh, and, you know, basically people were taking this instrument and trying their rhythms on this instrument and trying other rhythms on that instrument. In some cultures and traditions, uh, the Orthodox traditionalists of these musics don't like it when you play anything other than what they did traditionally. But obviously in the United States and in the West, uh, there's places where you can do it traditionally and there's places where you can take any instrument you buy and play it any kind of way you want. So it, it's all about the spirit, in my experience, at the end of the day. If you put your heart into something, it's going to be beautiful. And if, you, if, you, if you're very judgmental and coming from a place that's not warm, then it'll reflect in your character as well as your performance, you know? Uh, so, so I try to uh, put my heart into everything I do. And uh, to, I think the, the most important aspect of all cultures and traditions is the spirit. It's, the, it's our soulful, uh, loving, empathetic, compassionate nature, you know? Um, okay, so I can also demonstrate on the log drum all the rhythms I've been playing on the other instrument. So my point to you is that you can do a lot of different things and you can do different cultural things on so many different instruments you know uh the african rhythm triplets right or i can do the uh the, the, the right right left or the left left right Just going back to the regular Taino rhythms. Or the other one, which was. Or we got um, the double stroke row. dynamics, tone, accent, you can express, no matter what instrument you're playing, different feelings, you know? Um, what was the other one we do? Oh, so the, this one is a rudiment for marching band. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. It's a paradiddle, so. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. And there's different variations you can do with that. You can go right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. Drumming and syncopation is really about subdivisions of different patterns. Clave, which is, you know, synonymous to you know, salsa, Afro-Cuban, Afro-Puerto Rican, Afro-Caribbean musics, and many other musics in the world tied to Africa. Uh, so you got bop, 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 or you got bop, bop, bop. Clave is one, two, three, one, two. 
you can get you can do that in your hands. Or you can turn it the other way and do the two first, then the three. So that that and clave, if you ever get a log drum, whether it's African or indigenous Caribbean or from Mexico, because in Mexico they have a log drum also called the tepanatli. And it's a cool instrument, and everybody has their own approach and technique uh, with their native instruments, you know. Uh, and the same for modern drummers and percussionists and musicians. You know, you can take one instrument and it can be played so many different ways. You know, classical guitar, but you use in flamenco music, uh, uh, jazz guitar, or uh, uh, blues guitar, or rock guitar, or country or reggae. Similar forms of music, just a little different, and people take stuff in different directions. So, I think the most important thing about music is that it's a universal language that we all can understand and relate to. Whether we speak English or not, if we hear good music, whether we speak Spanish or whatever our language is, but we can feel. And that's how I think as humans we come together the quickest is through the feel of music. So, so like I was playing there, same thing, going back to. That's a Taino rhythm. Or the other rhythm from the Taino. It just depends on tempo or dynamics that you use to how it sounds. If I go back the really slow traditional way.
William, thank you so much for this presentation. We really appreciate it. And I would like to thank Shayna for hosting us. We'll definitely will welcome you guys back. Um, next time, probably we're going to be at the location so that way people can actually be dancing and have more fun. But again, we want to thank everybody for joining us and have a great afternoon, everybody.